this is Captain Hollywood Decoded. You know, wanted to make sure I got this in. We did four weeks of health. We did a cooking demonstration and we did a decoding. So, you know, when, when I start this back up at the top of the oven, the same thing. Go through uh, health four weeks, do another cooking demonstration. Next time, um, hopefully I'll have the, the um, you know, the, the interactive portion of it set up so I can, you know, do some actual cooking in front of everybody's face. Um, and then get into another decoded at that time. But this is pretty much the creme de la creme, you know, of the year. You know, Marvel runs Hollywood now, obviously, and out of all the Marvel movies, um, you know, Thor was the, the most received this year, and there's definitely reason for that. Um, do y'all know what just took place um, behind the scenes? What big move just happened? Corporate takeover that just took place? Disney. Yeah. Disney. Disney, Disney just acquired Marvel. Yeah. I mean, just acquired Fox. Fox yeah. All their properties. Simpsons, Family Guy, Futurama. You know, Futurama, X Men, Fantastic Four. So that means Deadpool. Wolverine and all the Deadpool. Oh, now they can cross over. That's right. Now they can be in the movies and be in the universe That's and all that. Which is interesting because when I, as I start this off, the guy who wrote. The screenplay, the writer of the film, is the guy who created um, X-23. Who's who? Who's what? Wolverine's daughter. You know, and, and the main thing that they always talk about is, yeah, yeah, Hugh Jackman said he'll come back if the MCU acquires Fox. Which is deep because Thor, you know what I'm saying? It got, it got that, that, that in there. So... Usually when I start my decoders off, I give kind of a just disclosure, disclaimer rather, um, to kind of bring everybody up to speed, okay? Hollywood Decoded is um, a movement in which I'm utilizing film, movies, as a means to break down psychology, cultural significance, um, and, you know, um, history and antiquity. Now... When Caucasians do it, for example, Joseph Campbell, like if he, he'd be in a college right now, and it'd be packed, and he'd be breaking down mythos, talking about how mythology influences psychology. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm taking it one step further and using film, doing the same thing. Um, and I have a large fan base, just like everybody's scattered, but some people don't see the importance. And I'm like, you really think a $200 million investment? Matter of fact, um, Avengers is a billion dollar, is, is, is like a billion. That's crazy. Because you gotta think of the marketing, the filming, all that stuff. It's a crazy investment. So they'll return the person who's responsible for writing. This is Kyle, uh, Craig Kyle, okay? He writes for Marvel Comics, and he was the writer for Thor Ragnarok, okay? He wrote it with this guy named Chris Yost. Um, he's actually the guy who created X-23, who's Wolverine's daughter in Logan, you know? And what makes this so, like, powerful is the, look where, you, look where he's from. First of all, he's from Texas, which if anybody saw, who saw Ragnarok? Oh, y'all can see it. Oh, y'all think we're going to see it after we get done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what did Serge say about the two guns? Texas. Got these from Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When did the movie come out? Third. Yeah. Wait a minute. It came out on a writer's birthday? Yeah. Oh, no. whoa. And Houston's very important because Houston is got hit by Harvey. Yeah. When did he get hit by Harvey? <clears throat> August 17th, 15th, something like that, right? You're going to find out how influential August is in a minute. And it's like, why all this stuff just connect like that? So this is the director 
okay? Um, Taika Watiti, he is um, a, a Maori, which is very interesting because one year prior to Thor Ragnarok coming out, Disney released a movie, Maori. Maori. Moana, Moana, where they were Maoriens, okay? Great movie. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. I've seen that thing like three times. I loved it. And that's who he is, and he hired his people in production to help with this film. You see what I'm saying? So why is it important? And then that's his birthday, August 16th. We're going to see a lot of August. A lot of August in here. Remember, you had, you had this guy, Maui, who was really like a combination of the Hulk and Thor, because what was his power? Lightning. You see what I'm saying? And the same situation that was going on with um, Hela was the same situation between Tafiti and um, Takak. Takak, right? Same situation. Heart was stolen. The daughter was broken. That's why she was evil like that. Okay, because of how her father raised her. So you got these kind of parallel storylines going on, okay. and you got Disney so, and Marvel again. Thor Ragnarok, just to kind of give you um, a quick little summary. Um, you know who Thor is, obviously, right? Okay, so um, did you see the Age of Ultron? Yes. Okay, so remember he started having the visions and stuff, and he had to dip? Okay, so after that point, he starts looking for the Infinity Stones, and then he finds out. Um, he, he starts finding out that Asgard is going to get destroyed because of something they call Ragnarok. Um, and it leads him um, to a entity named uh, Surtur, who's like this fire demon, who tells him um, that his dad hasn't been in the throne for a long time. Like, your brother is like tricking everybody. You know, so the whole movie is about him. Um, defeating Surtur, trying to prevent Ragnarok, and then, you know, a lot of, I don't want to give the whole movie away, but just to kind of give you a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Loki, Loki, Loki has masked himself as Odin, and he's sitting in the throne as the king, and got Odin as some crazy old man stashed on Earth while he doing it. Yes. I mean, that's what he do, like, Loki's the trickster. Do you know... Jim Carrey, The Mask. What was the name of that mask called? The Mask of Loki. Yeah, The Mask is Loki. That's him. He got green and yellow. Right? Yellow suit, green face. And he was a trickster. Yeah, and that's what that mask was called. It was called The Mask of Loki. Alright, so this scene in the movie was very, very powerful. Um, they were sitting on the bed. And oh yeah, and then let's not let's not forget that they finally told everybody that the Hulk is vegan. By the way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hulk's vegan. By the way, because when's the last time anybody seen the Hulk eat anything? Have you ever seen the Hulk eat anything? Yeah. They showed him eat, and he was eating squash. Mm -hmm. That same thing we cooked last week. Ain't that, <laughs> I missed. It. Ain't that funny, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So he got he got African necklaces on, he got the African fabric, he got like this real kind of guru shaman, you know, type vibe. But they they fooled you by making you think, oh, he's a child. Cause I, no no no, he's talking like a Yoda. Yoda's green too, wait. So they sitting there and he was like, Yeah, you know, we a bunch of two hot headed fools. And he was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk like like fire, throw like water. And he was like, well, actually, I think we, we both like fire. He was like, yeah, Hulk, Hulk, like, Hulk like raging fire. Thor like, like smoldering fire. And everybody thought it was real funny, right? And it's like, did they get what he was saying, though? Did they get what he was saying? What were they talking about? <laughs> and then that was another thing, right? Sun's getting real low. When they were fighting in the rain, he tried to say it because Black Widow... That's what he would say to him, and then that would make him turn back into Banner, calm down. So Thor tried to do it, and he got, got his butt handed back to him, you know what I'm saying? But even when they was in the streets in the parade, he was saying that over and over again. Sun's getting real low, sun's getting real low, sun's getting real low. When you say, when you say sun's getting real low, you're talking about a sunset. 
When you talk about a smoldering flame versus a raging flame, you're talking about a rising sun versus a setting sun. Why is all that important? Because we're on Sakar. This is Sakar, a deity in Kemet, right. who's kind of a combination of Asar and Heru. Okay? Or rather, Ra and, 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 and Osiris. Because remember, Ra is still Asar's father. So it's kind of like a bridge. And that was the name of the city, was Sakar. That's interesting. Because in this city named Sakar, the most popular person on there was the Hulk, okay? Who's representing the Sakar energy of Osar in this All right, particular so, film. All right. who's heard of the Sphinx? You heard of the Sphinx? You heard of the Sphinx? What's the Sphinx? Um, the thing in front of the structure, picture. Yeah, the structure, yeah. big, I don't know what animal it is. The big lion-headed animal in front of the pyramid. The okay. Thing. Lion, lion, lion headed body. animal? Lion body. Lion and body, but there's a man head, right? right? Okay. Now, apparently, it's supposed to be a Leo, a lion's body, right? Man's head. And do y'all know what direction it's looking in? East. Now, Sphinx don't really sound like an African name. That's Greek, right? So, what did the Comitians call the Sphinx? A remaket or haramaket. Brownie points, man. She pulled that out. <laughs> so, what does haramaket mean? Haramaket means Horus in the horizon. Ra Harakte means Horus of the two horizons. When I talk about circadian rhythm and the whole rhythm of night and day, that's a wave. Okay? So you got day at the top, you got night on the bottom, okay? The sunset, the western horizon represents hypnagogic, while the sunrise eastern horizon represents hypnopompic. And these are the two um, undulations that occur every single day. As the sun rises, and it's that red sun, it represents kepra, which is the beetle. Okay, the beetle represents like the child, something being born. It's the beginning, the sun during the morning. The afternoon, that's rock. It's right over. And that's what the sun feel like in the summertime. <laughs> that's what lions say, don't they? <clears throat> right on you. Then when it starts getting ready to set, that's a tune. That's the setting sun. And then during the night, when it's in the underworld and we don't see it and it's dark, that's a moon or the hidden one. All right? So when you see Hulk and Thor next to each other, one represents the rising sun and one represents the setting sun. That's why he's like, yo, I represent the smolder, the, the raging fire, you represent the smoldering fire because Hulk, they calling him a baby, represents the sun rising and going to its zenith point while Thor is representing this zenith point falling down here, represented by the fact that his father had grown old and he had just died. You see? So this is what's being discussed in this scene. Okay? Another name for Haramakit is Horus the Uniter. What was Thor doing in the movie? I called the name of this presentation in full. I called it The Witch's Hammer. And a lot of people was like, The Witch's? What is this guy talking about? But the funny thing is, there's a book called The Malleus... Maleficarum, okay, and it's translated as the Hammer of Witches, and this book was was designed to endorse the extermination of witches back in the day. Now, what is a witch? To them, a witch was just a woman who used natural means to heal and to handle things. So it might be a woman who's a reader. She might be an astrologist. She might be in a reiki or gemstones. She might be doing tonics. All those women were witches. And this was the witch's hammer. Isn't hammer important in this movie? Hammer is very important.
Let's go to, let's see. Now, like I said, Devil's Anus, optical device, there's something else going on. This guy's name is Hans Schwetzer. All right? Look at what he was known as. Mjolnir. That's Thor's hammer. Okay? He was an artist who produced posters for the Nazi party. Okay? For what? For propaganda. So even with all that demonic stuff the Nazis was on, they had a marketing campaign. <laughs> and their, their marketing promotion guy was named Thor's hammer. Okay. Oh. Incus actually means anvil. So you got hammer, you got anvil, and you got stirrup or stapes. So I'm looking at Hulk, and I'm like, wow. Hulk got an anvil in his hand. He got the anvil. Thor is the hammer, and then your girl represents the stapes. And when they fight, they're fighting in an arena where they're on the membrane of the ear because how are they fighting? They're getting thrown up and they're falling on it. Thrown up, fall on it. How do you hear? Vibrations come in, hit the tympanic membrane, right? And then the stapes and all of that stuff work together in order to turn sound into an electromagnetic energy. What do you think stadiums are used for? Why are there thousands and thousands of people in those stadiums screaming at the top of their lungs where 80% of them is rooting for the home team, 20% of them is rooting them for, for the team that came in there, but there's somebody in the skybox looking over everybody, soaking up all that energy. And how do you know people are enjoying themselves? By looking at them? It's the sound, it's the screaming, it's the yelling, it's people going crazy. That's the energy. So you see this Grand Masters guy's like, I've been here for billions and billions of years. What is he doing? He's hosting an arena? So it's not really hosting an arena, but it's him conjuring, not conjuring, but really um, usurping the energy of the people. The same way it happens here with football, basketball, and everything else. You see what I'm saying? And they showed it by way of the weapons, you know what I'm saying, that, that, the, that Hulk had. Okay, that's that right there. Okay, that's one part of the anvil, as you see, and then the, this is the other part. Okay, now, where was I about to get into now? Now, this right here, as I talked earlier, I said Hulk is a vegan. Um, and I actually mentioned this in um, Age of Ultron, too, but this is before they showed him eating like produce. This is another alchemical term, and this is called the Green Lion. Okay, let's keep in mind that Thor is a Leo. Chris Hemsworth is a Leo. Okay, another, another more August energy. You see the lion eating the sun, and as he's eating the sun, you see these stars going through his body. What's happening here? This is the process of being a vegan and plant-based, eating chlorophyll. And that's not my interpretation. Like, y'all can look it up. Okay? We, as, as vegans, we're supposed to be like lions. We're supposed to ravage the plant's kingdom. You see? And what you're seeing right here is like the beast mode, hunger, for solar energy. The same way people have that super, I'll kill you over the last piece of this pizza, look in their eye. We're supposed to have that same thing for life. You see? And that's what you're looking at right here. The green lion consuming the sun. You know? All right. But in this case, so what made like this movie so powerful was the fact that a lot of movies this year have women leads, but they're in power. They're not like servants or sidekicks or um, overly sexualized or anything like that. You have Wonder Woman, Last Jedi. Anybody seen Last Jedi yet? So Friends. Yeah? What y'all think? Awesome. It's okay. Yeah, I right? Know. I know, man. I know. <laughs> I should be cool. I got some things to say. Yeah. Right. You liked it, though. Yeah, of course you liked it. You're young. It had the sabers and everything yeah. was there. <laughs> the visuals was dope. 
But they disrespected. Ooh, they disrespected us with that movie, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Answer me this. Colors? You talking about how you, us with us? How Colors. you got the power? Your dad, your father, is the most powerful Jedi next. I mean, um, um, Sith. Or a dark force person next to the emperor, right? And you believe in him enough to convince him, right, to embrace the force again after all these years. Your nephew has a thought that he wants to go to the dark side, and you about to take his head off. I'm like, no, that don't make no sense, bro. Come on, man. You talk Darth Vader down, man. You telling me you can't talk to your nephew. Right. You wasn't going to go to Hans exactly. or Leia. Be like, yo, son's tripping. Son's right. out of control. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to the Emperor in his sleep. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. That didn't make no sense. Mm -hmm. Another thing I heard, Mark Hamill right. he wasn't right. told that he was going to die. He found out when he watched the movie. Wait, yes. so, wait a minute. Wait, so Luke Skywalker died? Yep. Oh, yeah. oh you had spoiler. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, I see it, but... Spoiler. Yeah, yeah, because it's called The Last you. Jedi, and he says it in the trailer, this is not going to go the way you think. Right. And it sure as hell did. It did. Okay, so but, but she was The Last Jedi, right? Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Sort of. I'm like, it was just a lot of things that happened in that movie. I was like, <laughs> like that scene with his shirt off when he was standing there. Yeah, the H.E. -E is the like, yeah. The L.A. is lax because remember, she's the she's the first person that they were able to develop an immortal cell line from. Her cells still exist to this day, and when they when they tag her cells, they're called hella, hella cells. Yeah. Say so it. this is a this is a woman. Say That's why we say hell a lot. <laughs> say hell a lot of <laughs> say man. It's all you know. Um. Okay. So let me say this. Yep. <coughs> so Hella isn't dead. No. Yeah. She ain't dead. She's over the dead people. Right. How the person who governs all the dead folks die? We didn't see her die. No. So. Remember at the end of the movie, what ends up happening, this is a real powerful time. This is Revelations. The ten horns are blowing. Okay? You got the crown. You put it, you put the, put it on the eternal flame. Serta grows up. He gets all big. And what does he do? He drives the sword deep into the waters. Okay? And an explosion takes place. This explosion is enlightenment. That's why they showed... That's why they showed this... People thought it was like the destruction of Asgard. I was like, no, that ain't the destruction of Asgard. That is the waking up of the God. Hmm. Right. That's true. Nah, she ain't dead. She's probably going to be back in Infinity War. Don't be surprised if Thanos bring her up in the fold. Don't be surprised. Hold on. Um, where are you? Here we go. Good job keeping her hidden like uh, Pepper. Yeah. When that flame comes rushing through the city and it lights the fire. Remember the medulla oblongata? Do you know what it's also called? Arbor vitae, which means tree of life. Okay? That thing caught a flame. It didn't get destroyed. It got lit. And then he, all of a sudden, you know, he lost his eye. He gained his sight. And now he is the hammer. He is the Mjolnir. He has the power. You see what I'm saying? And then he was able to... You know, take his people with it. This is definitely a majority you know, so, um, portion um, of the breaking down of this film. Just to let you know that the movie was about the rising of the Kundalini, the 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 um, the rising and the resonance of your chakras, and that if you want to get your God body status on, yes, it's dietary, yes, it's other things, but it's definitely spiritual, and it represents you being able to raise that energy. Until you get to that point where you're able to put your crown on your eternal flame, and you can put your your crown on the eternal fire, and you can wake up and be the god. And what happens at the end of the movie? He gets on his ship and he sits in his throne. So it lets you know now he's king. And as soon as he sits down. <laughs> Thanos show up because as soon as we get the one level, yo, it's time to fight another yeah. war. Right. 
you see what I'm saying? That's right, boss level. So <laughs> that's what I got for y'all tonight, because you know I know she got a close and everything like that. So I definitely was able to get off enough. That was a good 65% of it. I think there's another 35% of the presentation. And um, we're gonna work something out to film the DVD out with the slides, high definition, all things like that, so y'all could get it. But I wanted to like communicate the Thor Ragnarok to everybody. And oh, to one, sell one Doctor one Strange. <laughs> Yo, they did it. Man. All, they did it. All they did it. But yeah. um, so you just did you have a question too, or you just wanted to see? No. Nope. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the aspect of hidden messages in Hollywood has been, I guess, apparent for this beginning of time. Oh yeah. What do you think about the Simpsons uh, predictions? Oh man. Okay, so. Has anybody seen The Runaways yet? <coughs> Not yet? <coughs> okay. Well, The Runaways got this guy that kind of built this television that has an antenna on it that can pick up frequencies that allow him to see events of the future. And there's actually a person over in um, Iran. Not Israel. I think it's Iran. Where he, and y'all can look this up, he, he made a device a com it's a, like a computer where you can look nine to ten years in the future at events and it's not like no it's not mumbo just real he like made a statement at the UN and, and everything and he's like yeah what America's spending uh, billions of dollars trying to do I did it for a fraction of the cost so he can time travel he can time travel not physically but he can get information you know what I'm saying from the future I, and that, that's probably the reason why reality is changing so quick. You probably got people right. manipulating stuff. Mandela effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it well, just they happens. said Barack was a time traveler. He was in the program, and they admitted yeah, it. Oh, like, wow. yeah. Extra, bro. like yeah, that. Yeah. That's the thing. But we got to understand that we're actually more powerful. Right. You see what I'm saying? In order for you to to um, observe a dimension, you have to be a dimension above it. See, it, we we see three D which means we're above 3D. But 3D is coupled with 4D. 4D is time. How is 3D coupled with 4D? How is 3D coupled with time? Because the only way that you know that this stool is in three dimensions is if I turn it. That's the only way you can see all the parts. You see, when something is two dimensional, it's flat. You see the whole thing. One dimension, you see it too. 3D needs time in order for you to observe it. Which means if you're observing it through time, you must be in a higher dimension to observe the thing. Yeah. So we're already higher than we know we are. It's just that we sleep. Right. <laughs> we sleep in the third and in the fourth. We're like all, we're in the gel of it all. You know what I mean? But, um, did I, an did I, did I answer the question? Well, I mean, when they show... Uh, episodes of you know like Trump winning years right see years. I went off I went off I went <laughs> off topic I, 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 I did a tangent again so on the Simpsons what I was trying to get to was saying that I'm I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Gronin had some type of influence in which he knew about certain events because for him to have so many things, like even the acquisition of Fox. The very first episode of The Simpsons, a, twin, a uh, Mickey Mouse owned company. Come on, man. Fox. Yeah. yeah. Trump's in there, all this, I mean, um, what else is in there? The, Trump getting killed. If Trump gets killed or dying off, then he knows too much. Come on, man. <laughs> I just might give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I already much. believe all that. Like. Because the, the Simpsons just got too much in it. And then look how long it has been yes. on TV. Does, is there still new episodes? Yes. yes. Every yes. season is new. What are they on now? 30 years? Yes. Oh, which is what they say, which is why <laughs> Disney wanted them more than Marvel. They wanted for that streaming service. They needed the content of The Simpsons this and Futurama. This is Deep, 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 deep. But, yes, um, what do I think about all the synchronicities, I feel that the man is influenced in some way, and instead of him <coughs> doing a blog or blurting it out in the paper, you put it in a real obnoxious cartoon that no one will believe in and just laugh at, Art Chakra, you know what I mean? So it's one of two things. 
either he man, I'm not surprised. Like, so, y'all, I appreciate everybody for coming on out after work during these holidays. I hope I was able to give y'all some information. Remember, all this stuff is not really so much about the movie, but these key terms. So y'all can go home and do further research on and you'll, you'll be surprised where it takes you. All right? Just got done doing a, a nice uh, percentage of the Thor Ragnarok decoded. People loved it. We had a great Q&A. Um, next week, won't be here, but we'll be doing food because there'll be a Kwanzaa celebration. We'll be coming back in the new year. We'll be restarting um, with the health classes. It'll be four consecutive, then followed by the cooking instruction. And then afterwards, we'll be doing another decoded. So stay tuned. We'll be back. Peace.